Hi there. So um, here is the final layout of the uh, wireless weather station for the TI-994A. Uh, on the right hand side here um, we have the usual suspects. Uh, we have the three shield, uh, the, I mean the Arduino on the bottom here with a Nexby shield in the middle and then the weather shield on top. We have the real-time clock here um, and um, the uh, uh, wind uh, and rain gauges will be connecting to these RJ11 connectors here. Here is the uh, RF antenna connected to the XB. Now, uh, one thing we have not talked about is how to power up this, uh, this station uh, without having to run uh, wires to it. And of course, I mean, the uh, easy solution is to use solar power. And so what I have done here is I have added a Sunny Buddy uh, solar charger module um, from SparkFun. By the way, all these modules have been sourced. Actually, everything on this board has been sourced from SparkFun. Um, so anyway, so this, uh, this module essentially connects to a uh, solar cell. Um, it has a connector for a lithium ion battery. Here I have a 2 amp hour lithium ion, ion battery which should be plenty sufficient. Um, it's a 6 volt battery. should be plenty sufficient to power up the uh, Arduino stack here. Um, and um, the uh, solar panel is right here. And that's a 9 watt solar panel that I got also from uh, spark fun and should provide excellent charging uh, capability um, for the battery. Um, the connector for this is over here and then um, the uh, Sunny Buddy will power up the, the Arduino via this connector here. Um, I did test this out already and it works great. I charged it yesterday. It was really sunny outside and everything looks great. Here's the, by the way, the uh, temperature sensor, digital temperature sensor. So everything is really wired up at this point. We have um, remote power accessible um, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put all this together in an enclosure. Looks like one of the wires disconnected. Um, so one thing about these wires is that I'm probably going to put some hot glue on these connectors here to prevent them from coming out. As you can see, they tend to like to uh, pop out here and this is likely to happen when this thing is operational simply because it will um, be subject to vibration from wind and stuff like that. So I'll probably hot glue all these connectors together. Um, which should work and should be easily removable uh, if I need to do some repair work. Uh, one thing about the layout, you know, I could have made it even more compact, but I wanted easy access to the components um, in case I do need to repair it or say replace the uh, battery on the RTC module or one of the modules fails or any number of things or the Arduino, uh, you know, loses or gets corrupted or something like that. So, yeah, that's... Uh, it for the setup so next is getting that case designed it should be a pretty simple rectangular case with um, uh, openings on the back for the solar panel and the uh, digital uh, temperature sensor um, and we should be pretty much done by then thank you for watching and here it is being printed on my 3d printer uh, it's going pretty well but it's taking a long time this is probably the largest print I've done on this printer. This is a fairly low-end printer. So it's looking pretty good overall. Um, the only thing I noticed was that there was some walking uh, down here uh, initially. Um, it's not affecting the, uh, the print in general, but it's going to give a defect probably on the front face, which is too bad. But uh, I'm not about to restart that print. It's been going on for almost 24 hours now, believe it or not. I do have the printer set on low speed um, for uh, better sticking and uh, reduced warping, but it's not 100% foolproof as you can see. On the back you can see the uh, 
opening for the cable to be coming through into the box. And um, on the inside, we can see uh, the posts. There's one here um, that will be attaching the, uh, the board. Okay, so we'll let this finish. Uh, it's about 67% done. And uh, then we'll go over the final result. Alright, so the printing is complete. I've made a few uh, things with the printer here. First one is that box, uh, which is the enclosure, and this is where the uh, components will fit in uh, neatly. Actually, it'll be that way. Um, like this, with the wires uh, coming in off the back, and there are posts in here, um, which will uh, secure the, uh, the board. Um, there are two holes um, for the uh, solar panel cables and the RJ11s and the temperature sensor here. And um, the way the box will fit will be this way. And a little logo ATI wireless weather station. Um, and the holes will be on, on the bottom so that it does not get affected hopefully by uh, rain and such. Um, and leave some uh, element of ventilation because I suspect this will get pretty hot um, in the summertime in particular. Um, I also made a cover um, which will go like so. Uh, it will screw into the, the post on the top here and it has a, uh, a bracket here, a half bracket with uh, six screw holes and the pole will basically um, sit in there um, like so and then um, there's another um, half bracket that I made uh, with holes uh, through and through that essentially will just go on top like that and will screw into uh, on, onto the cover and so once this is all screwed in um, it'll support the box and uh, really works it should work pretty well the only concern I have is that if there's a lot of uh, wind that there may be a lot of vibration and I wonder if this uh, half bracket here uh, is going to separate from the cover I guess we won't find out at some point um, the other two things I made uh, were um, these uh, brackets uh, basically for supporting the uh, solar panel. Um, here's the solar panel again um, and um, it's a pretty large, um, it's a good sized uh, panel and uh, it has these um, little uh, thingies at the four corners and I was pondering how to actually install this uh, in a manner that's efficient and, and so what I figured I would do is I would uh, use the um, uh, the top of the sensor array and it has you know two flat spots here and a nice flat surface on the top so what these brackets do, do is that they fit like so will be eventually epoxied in and then uh, the panel will essentially um, sit like this on top and um, I will uh, run um, straps from below from these uh, doohickeys that are on the four corners of the panel under the, the, the main strut and to the other side and so this will fit securely on top and be facing constantly the sun. The shadows from the sensor areas will be marginal. They shouldn't have much of an effect on on uh, energy production. So that's basically um, the general setup. So I'm going to go ahead and um, assemble all this and I'll show you the final product. So here's the uh, installed uh, board. Um, in the enclosure and um, the uh, 
main difference from uh, previous is that I added an additional battery here as well as a second uh, solar charger down here. Uh, it's anybody solar charger, so there are two of them here, one on the bottom, one on top. This is the first battery in here, and uh, they're connected in parallel, each providing 3.7 volts, um, and each battery is uh, 2000 milliamp hour. Um, the reason I did that is uh, I needed to upconvert the voltage from 3.7 volts to the minimum of 7 volts that the uh, redboard, Arduino redboard I have down here, requires. Um, and I used a little upconverter, you can see it uh, over here, uh, which I glued to the side of the enclosure. And uh, that's a variable. Uh, uh, up, up voltage um, uh, or step up voltage uh, board um, that uh, provides anywhere between um, 5 and something like 24 volts. Anyway, um, so with the two batteries in parallel um, connected uh, to the same uh, solar panel over here, um, even with the uh, up converter uh, in the circuit we should be having enough juice to power up uh, the entire uh, station uh, even on cloudy days or overnight at least I hope so we'll see um, so to recapitulate uh, what's in the box aside from the batteries and the associated solar chargers uh, we have a uh, uh, the weather shield here, the spark fun weather shield. We have the uh, XB um, right here in the middle, the XB uh, shield, which provides the wireless capability, and the antenna for it comes out here and is stuck on the side. And on the bottom is the Arduino breadboard. And here we have the uh, real time clock uh, module. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of silicone sealant uh, on the edges and button it up and set everything up. We'll, I'll show you the final product. Thanks. Okay, so here's the final product. Um, and as you can see, um, the solar panel is sitting on top here um, with the brackets in place. And I did use the rubber bands for now to secure it uh, from the bottom. Um, but um, I'll be replacing those with a more sturdy um, uh, strap. I've got the rubber and the rubber pants will eventually dry up and crack and break, especially in Minnesota weather. So, um, yeah, um, everything has come out nicely um, and uh, um, it's a really nice contained unit and it can be taken out as a single whole piece and uh, replaced somewhere else. I'm currently in the process of uh, redoing my deck, so um, this is just a temporary setup until I finish testing. I'm still finishing up the writing of the software and uh, I'm trying to figure out how long the batteries last uh, when there is no sunlight at all. In any case, um, this is it. Um, I'll um, show the final um, software in action as soon as I am done with it. Right, thanks. Okay, so this uh, is uh, the final product as far as the software control program on the TI side. Um, and it essentially uh, collates all the information as well as uh, some historical data which is saved on DSK2. Um, it keeps track of uh, the highest and lowest temperatures uh, to date as well as daily high and lows uh, as, and total rain, rainfall since program start as well as daily rainfalls. All the daily information is um, reset at midnight but the historical data otherwise is kept on disk which is updated at midnight as well. Um, and other than that um, it's pretty standard stuff that we've seen before. Um, I did add a progress uh, update bar. It takes a little bit of time for the program to collect, collect all the data from the weather station 
and once it does that it will uh, refresh the screen with the new data um, so yeah I mean it's uh, working really nicely here we're close to an update uh, right now um, and um, so this really concludes uh, the project overall uh, hardware and software and it was a lot of fun here it goes it refreshed the screen uh, you'll notice here that there is a sleep mode um, showing up and uh, that's basically a uh, uh, a process that is optional that I've included in the program um, that allows the uh, weather station to space out its uh, readings um, in order to try to save some battery power. I haven't found it to be terribly effective but uh, it might shave off, uh, I mean may, may, may it might add actually maybe an extra hour of battery life which is not bad in any case the listing of the program as well as uh, the gory details of the uh, assembly and setup uh, will all be on uh, my uh, uh, web blog all right I hope you enjoyed this uh, project as much as I did a huge learning experience uh, but it was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching.